Tonight, we begin with the fatal shooting of a 28-year-old car dealer in Nairobi's Kilimani area. Well, two people are in police custody following the murder of Kevin Omwenga, which occurred last night at an apartment block in Kilimani. The two who have been identified as Robert Bodo Oko and Chris Obure are helping police with investigations to unravel the motive of the shooting. Well, police are also analyzing the gun used in the fatal shooting of Omwenga. Was it a deal gone wrong or was there something else? Well, Citizen TV has acquired CCTV footage from the building showing activities outside Omwenga's apartment before he was rushed to hospital where he was pronounced dead with a single gunshot wound to his chest. Nimrod Tabu now gives us the chronology of last night's events. Galana suits in Kilimani is where Kevin Omwenga met his untimely death last evening. His apartment has now become the scene of a murder from where police are piecing together evidence that could enable them unravel the circumstances leading to the murder. Police say they have gathered crucial information, cartridge and bullet head to be forwarded to the Fire Bureau for analysis before they can proceed with murder charges against Robert Oko, a suspect who is said to have been in possession of the murder weapon, a mini Seska pistol. The CCTV footage also shows the chronology of events. 8.40 p.m. and the first individual disembarks from the elevator on the seventh floor. Wearing a cap and a jacket, the man heads straight to Mwenga's apartment, which is partly hidden by this wall. Two minutes later, a second gentleman leaves the elevator and heads to the same direction. He is seen wearing a white hoodie and some dark pants. At 8.47 p.m., the man who police are treating as a main suspect is seen leaving the apartment and heads to the lift. Exactly five minutes later, the man who has been identified as Robert Oko disembarks from the elevator again and returns to Omwenga's apartment. The events taking place behind this wall are hidden all through. A fourth gentleman who was within the vicinity of the apartment is seen leaving one minute after Oko had returned to the apartment. He enters the lift and comes back to the apartment 10 minutes after 9 p.m. In his hands, he appeared to carry supplies. The contents are unknown. One minute later, another man wearing a white T-shirt walks out of the lift and heads the direction of Umwenga's apartment. Four minutes later, the gentleman who had arrived carrying supplies is seen leaving and disappears into the elevator. At 9.27 p.m., a man who had been spotted by the CCTV camera as the second one to arrive at the apartment a few minutes before 9 p.m. leaves the apartment. Seven minutes later, two men arrive, and we have since established that one of them was the same one who was carrying supplies to the apartment and had left shortly. 36 minutes past 9 p.m., a man who appeared to be of Arab or Asian origin leaves the apartment and comes back minutes later only to bump into Kevin Mwenga as he was heading to the lift. They engage in small talk and enter the lift. One of them returns. At 9.41, Robert Oko heads to the lift casually, but heads back to the apartment before leaving once again and disappears into the lift. Between 9.41 p.m. and 10.28 p.m., more activities around the lift area as men can be seen walking in and out of the lift and head to the apartment. At 10.35 p.m., the diseased Kevin Omwenga returns to his apartment in the company of a woman. The two can be seen talking and giggling. They disappear behind the wall. Robert Oko follows them four minutes later and so does the supplies man, this time carrying a dish in his hand. At 11.22 p.m., activities around the lift area appear to change. The calm and casual walk is no more. Instead, the man who had been moving around carrying supplies is seen making a dash for the lift, pressing buttons to open. He leaves after severally going back and forth. Two minutes later, Robert Oko heads to the lift, also in confusion. He is seen pressing the buttons before returning to the apartment. All the while, the elevator doors open and close. This goes on four times before he finally enters the lift. It is here that he can be seen removing an object from his back pocket. Five minutes later, a man who has been identified as the apartment's caretaker arrives and dashes to the apartment. Another man can be seen reacting in despair. Robert Oko then returns holding his back pocket. Oko and two other gentlemen struggle in the lift area before heading to the apartment. 
CCTV footage at the ground floor also captured the activities that were going on. But all this while, nothing appeared suspect until the shooting occurred. At 11.32 p.m., Robert Oku approaches a lift from Omwenga's apartment. And behind him, two men are carrying the injured man who had a bullet wound on his chest. Oko then appears to grab a bed cover on the floor, wipes blood stains before joining the rest inside the lift. Outside, all the individuals are in a haste to take the injured man to hospital. Robert Oko is almost knocked down by the vehicle carrying Omwenga. Eventually, the woman who had accompanied Omwenga earlier is left behind together with Oko. Today, Oko is arrested together with one Chris Obure, who is said to be the owner of the gun. Police investigating the case say they have conducted preliminary investigations and quizzed all those who are in the apartment. It has been reported that Oko was with Omwenga in his bedroom before they had a loud bang. Oko is then reported to have been in a rush to leave the room, and it was hard telling the others in the house that Umwenga had shot himself. The shooting is suspect, and police are now investigating claims that the gun could have been stolen from Obure's office. It is alleged that Oko works as Obure's security aide. Obure, who is a businessman in the city, has found himself on the wrong side of the law previously. Meanwhile, Oko is said to have joined the rest last night at Nairobi Women's Hospital, where the victim died after returning the gun to Obure's office. The body of the disease has since been transferred to Montezuma Mortuary pending a post-mortem. Nimrotabu, Citizen TV.